In this video, I'll give an overview and demonstration of a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit IG-102 radio frequency signal generator. Signal generators are electronic devices that generate repeating or non-repeating electronic signals and are used in designing, testing, troubleshooting, and repairing electronic devices. Radio frequency or RF signal generators are capable of producing frequencies in the range used for radio receivers. RF signal generators are often used for servicing and aligning radio receivers. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. The IG-102 is one of Heathkit's more popular pieces of test equipment. It was offered from 1963 to 1977. The 1971 U.S. Heathkit catalog listed at a price of $31.95, while in 1976 it was $44.95. The IG-102S was the Berkeley Physics Laboratory version, which was identical except for an additional set of jacks for a high-level direct output needed for experiments in the laboratory. It should be noted that the laboratory version is not suitable for radio and TV servicing as high-level RF radiates from the additional jacks. One could easily remove or disconnect the extra jacks in the laboratory version to turn it into a standard IG-102. Both the IG-102 and IG-102S were sold as kits. The IGW-19 was a factory assembled version of the IG-102 selling for about $10 more than the IG-102 in 1971. As part of their educational products line, Heathkit sold the EF3 course called How to Understand and Use Your Signal Generator, which was intended for use with the IG-102 and included a test chassis. Model EF3-2 was a bundle that included both the EF3 course and the IG-102 generator. Marketed as the best value in general purpose RF generators bar none, it was said to be the choice of thousands of educational institutions, service shops, and laboratories. The unit is a pretty standard RF signal generator that can produce amplitude modulated or unmodulated RF signals in six overlapping bands suitable for AM, FM, TV, long wave, and short wave receivers. The bands cover the following frequencies. Band A, 100 to 320 kilohertz. Band B, 310 to 1100 kilohertz. Band C, 1 to 3 megahertz. Band D, 3.1 to 11 megahertz. Band E, 10 to 32 megahertz. And band F, 32 to 110 megahertz. The output voltage was rated at 0.1 volts or higher with an output impedance of 50 ohms. The commonly used IF frequencies of 455 kilohertz and 10.7 megahertz are marked on the dial scale. An additional scale inside of band F is calibrated for the harmonics of band F from 100 to 220 megahertz. Both the unit and the manual list frequencies in cycles per second, kilocycles, and megacycles as was standard at the time. The RF output level is controlled by fine and coarse attenuators but is not calibrated. The modulation frequency is fixed at around 400 hertz and about a 30% modulation level. The unit can accept an external modulation input. It can also directly output the 400 hertz audio signal. Tuning uses a vernier drive on the dial. It used the same size and style of case as some other Heathkit instruments of the period like the IT11 capacitor checker. It came with microphone type input-output connectors which are often replaced with more modern and widely available BNC connectors. The manual has about three pages covering applications for the generator, such as AM radio alignment and signal injection for testing of TV and hi-fi amplifiers. Let's take a look inside the unit. It uses two tubes, each of which is a dual tube, a 12AT7 for the RF oscillator and a 6AN8 amplifier and modulator. The power supply uses a silicon diode. The coils and band switch were factory assembled and aligned. Basic alignment could be done without instruments using an AM radio and station of known frequency. 
if you had an accurate shortwave radio receiver that could be tuned to a frequency standard station like WWV, you could adjust the coils for additional accuracy. Band F can be adjusted using an FM radio tuned to a station of known frequency. Let's see a demonstration of the unit operating. I've connected the output to an oscilloscope so we can visually see it. We're now looking at the RF output on band C at approximately 1 MHz. As we can see, it's pretty close to a pure sine wave. On the higher frequencies, it was actually desired that the unit was not a pure sine wave so that it could produce harmonics above the fundamental frequency beyond 100 MHz. The coarse and fine attenuator controls adjust the output level. If we switch to band D, the output goes to about 3.2 MHz. If we switch the mode to modulated RF, we can see the amplitude modulated signal. Now we can see the output signal is amplitude modulated at 400 Hz. It can be also modulated by an external audio input. Switching to the AF output, we can see the 400 Hz sine wave output, closer to 330 Hz on this particular unit. The output level is adjustable and goes up to approximately 14 volts RMS without a load. This signal is useful for testing the audio stages of a radio receiver or amplifier, for example. I obtained this unit in 2013 from another local amateur radio operator. It was in good condition and did not need any adjustments to the alignment. It came with an original manual for the IG-102S laboratory version rather than the standard IG-102. Since my unit is an IG-102, it could not have been the original manual for this unit. It has the original microphone type connectors and a cable which appears to be original. For the price, the IG-102 was a good value in a small, reliable generator with basic features needed for applications like radio receiver testing and alignment, and Heathkit sold many of them over the years. The IG-102 is one of the pieces of test equipment described in my new book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The appendix provides a list of references and resources including books, websites, and suppliers of parts, manuals, and related products and services, as well as a detailed product listing of every known model of test equipment produced by Heathkit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.